not a real thing. Justin! There he is, Gary. How now we doing? got some good old fashioned Gemini uh, talking here. And uh, this is Justin from EMF Rocks. And uh, you're going on a podcast today and you're going to be talking. What's the podcast you're going on? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, Mel and Kelly's podcast, and uh, so they're they're two beautiful souls, uh, and we're going to be talking uh, mostly on EMF. But I wanted to really ask you about how the fascia interplays with fat, and they, they both of them have have gone through procedures to cut the fat out of their bodies. And their audiences are going to really probably want to hear about it. And I want to direct them to you in the, with the proper verbiage. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I think, I think this is where, and this is where I have the conversation, I, cause I didn't want to send you a text back because I had a belief about fat, which also corresponded to a belief about food. And, you know, I grew up, believing that food was a fuel and then I fasted for 44 days. I mean, I didn't just go to fast that that and I proved and at the end of 44 days, I was legitimately fat. I wasn't skinny. And I'm like six weeks without food and I wasn't skinny or bone racked. It wasn't like I had gone six weeks without food. And, and so it drew up bigger questions. What is fat? You know, what is food? What is a fuel? What is? And so so taking a step back, um, we won't go into the food is a fuel or not argument or talk yet, but it's what is fat. And so we have layers of fascia. The way I see it is this. It's you have the fascia lines that you can, anatomy trains that you can look at. And those are lines of stability because fascia is our structure. So it makes sense that we have these spiral lines to create mobility and structure in movement. But I see fascia the best way to describe it is and i get people to go look at fascia magnified 25 times because if you watch that video you'll see you'll see uh, fascia with layers of fat in there with blood vessels and then with little little rivers off the blood vessels you'll see tendons and nerves crossing over each other um and you'll see all these different things within the layers and you have to look at it all look at it all because you'll see layers and layers of function and what I've noticed is that each layer of function belongs to an organ. That's the way I see it. Like if you take a tree and you have a center of the tree is your bone and around there you have 10 layers. That's the way I see it. Now, you can't see these layers, but you can look and observe their function. Like in Chinese medicine, they'll tell you that the layer underneath the skin is the lungs. And that makes sense. If I if Breathe something in, it can change the coloration of my skin globally instantaneously. So that makes sense that that, that is. And if you look at, if you adhere your fascia, you lock it up against the bone, you can't move. So like that action would be the what is fear, which is associated with bladder. So I looked at it and said, well, if, faction, if that fascia functions in these rings, concentric rings, which when you come down here in March, you'll be able to feel it on me you'll literally be able to feel the layers of fascia moving, which is the experience. Because when you can feel it, then you, there's no other way to explain it. <clears throat> we know what one is. We know what uh, the bladder and fear is. It locks up the bone so it can't move. And we know what the lung is. It's right there. So then we can, dis we can guess, or better than guess, we can make educated decisions about what layers are in between. So what I found is, is that if I have an emotion, First of all, the fascia is uh, like a webbing, so like like mesh. And in the fascia magnified 25 times, you see water transiting. Literally, you see it moving up and down and around that mesh to support some function. What I've noticed is that if I have a lot of anger, I'll get a rush around here, around the liver. And what I've noticed is people who are generally angry have a lot of tension here or they'll have if it's if it, they just get angry for a while they'll have a lot of what looks like fluid there from a body worker's perspective so what is water water is a universal solvent 
it removes things from the body. It's a cleaner. Um, and what is it cleaning? Well, what does an emotion do? An emotion fires hormones. If I have a release of an emotion, I can measure it from a hormonal rate. So I've noticed that the water, if I'm angry, a lot of water goes right there. And then it goes places like right here, like people who are pro progressively angry, have really tight inner thighs, lower back, really, really tight around the liver, really, really a lot of tension right up around here. And these are all liver areas of the body. And, and I've noticed that the water will hang out for the release of the emotion. So if I have anger, the liver goes and the water goes there, but it waits for us to talk about or release the emotion. And that's why when we do fascia maneuvers and Justin, you'll probably have experienced this, you'd be doing a light little maneuver and then all of a sudden your whole body breaks out in what appears to be sweat. Yes. Yeah, like right from a cold. Like I could just do one maneuver, have six breaths, and then my whole body starts to sweat. Well, that doesn't follow the normal course of I have to I have to have a metabolic action from lifting or moving. So there so I my version of that it's a release of emotion. And 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 through the layers of fascia. So what I've noticed is that people, you know how they say fat, they used to say, well, fat, it's all over, but people have like fat there or fat here, or fat here or fat here. And it, it seems to be that fat isn't universal. It doesn't go, it can be in areas. Like we have fat around our liver, we can have fat around an organ, one organ and not another. Like. Like mechanically, we can look at at um, at um, MRIs, and we can see we have fat deposits in areas. It's not equally spread, so that busts the myth that it's equally spread. So if I'm holding a whole bunch of water in these layers of fat here around my liver, as an example, because I'm angry and I'm not releasing it. And that water staying there saying, I'm waiting for you to release the emotion so I can get the toxins out of there. And you're not doing anything to release it. The water stays there. And it keeps staying there, staying there, staying there. And if it stays there long enough, it becomes stagnant. And the stagnation of that water, over time, it starts to change its color. And it goes brown. And if you stay there long enough, that brown stagnation starts to go white. Now, that's a very different look at what fat is. So fat to me, and I had an episode with Graham. Um, I have to find it. It was a year ago, and he was asking, Graham Tuttle, the barefoot sprinter, he was asking, what's the difference between apathos fat and fascial tissue, fascial fluids? And I'm like, I don't see a difference. I see it's stagnation of fluid. So when we do assisted maneuvers on people, people have what looks like fat, and it moves, and then all of a sudden they don't have that combination of fat let's say around the hips um oh here i'll show you something really quick so I'll show you a diagram or sorry a picture so i'll show you somebody who who we we do a session with and and then this is and again these are just ways of looking at it so favorites uh well first of all for those of you who are seeing that there's the first picture of me. That, that's before my fast. The second picture was after 44 days of not eating. I would have thought the third picture was like a year later. That's first of all, it's like, well, the food, eat, not eating food didn't work for me very well. <laughs> okay, so this, this, is, this is one where on this side right here, this is two months of doing fascial maneuvers. So you can see that she's standing taller and leaner. She has a scoliosis, she's corrected it. But you see all that, that fat there that starts to go away. And then what does it look like from here? Taller and leaner again, and then then I'll show you more so for, because 
collagen is would be the precursor to like fat blockages because collagen has to move and detox too through the lymphatic system so so i'll show you show you an example here here's my mother this is the before and that's the other one's after and that's only 30 minutes later that's before that's after it's 30 minutes at 82 years old see all that that there that looks like so what that what that looks like so it looks like the skin tightened up so however you look at it what we're doing with fascial maneuvers is taking now those layers and breaking them up so the fluids can start to flow again and what we've noticed is people who look fat all of a sudden as they get taller and leaner and stretch out that doesn't look like fat anymore okay. okay so what would you say to someone who had they call it the vertical sleeve gastrectomy like a vsg where they had it cut out say they got some emotional issues yeah um yeah i i I, I, first of all, I believe in the body's ability to heal. Fascia is a mesh substance. So if I cut something out, the body can heal, but it needs to have the ability to rebuild the infrastructure. Okay. So the way that the body does that is we, our body is silica, sand, and water, bacteria, and viruses. So the first thing is to build the silica levels by putting diatomaceous earth and then iris sea moss to hold the water. Then by moving that tissue and breaking it apart, breaking the adhesions, because the fat cutting out created adhesions issues. Like, for example, the uh, Society of Orthopedic Surgeons now recommends that you no longer cut out fascial tissue. So when you're cutting fat out, what are you doing? That's fascia. You, there's no, right. no way you can cut fat out without taking out fascia. And so they literally say, if you can avoid it, no longer do it. So... So that means that that those layers of that mesh that was put together here. Here, let's actually bring that up here. Um, the layers of the mesh that's put together were cut out. Well, I, I believe they'll. I, I truly believe they'll heal. And in my own life, they have. So, and I, you know, the people that I work with, I've seen that heal too. Let's see, fascia. Uh, let's cancel it. No. Uh, I should magnify 25 times. Okay, if you haven't seen this, I really strongly suggest that you get that you, that you see this. And so what you're seeing is you're seeing. Blood vessels and blood veins contained in there. Do you see that gel-like substance there? Mm -hmm. So it's not a muscle. So what is that, right? And then... See, it looks like crisscross. There's the fat contained in that layer of fascia. So when you cut out your fat, you're actually cutting out your layer of fascia. There's water droplets going out there. So the best way to show it is to actually show, see the water droplets moving around. Yeah. Super powerful. Of course, look at all the ads coming up now on YouTube. And, and so I encourage people to go take a look at that because it gives you it gives you an idea to look at fascia and you can't talk about fat without looking at fascia and saying well that fat was deposited within those layers of fascia so one of the ways that visually i say think of your fascia like baklava baklava is this phyllo pasty it's flaky and all through that phyllo pasty we have oil and we have sugar and honey and it's all the good stuff and it's flaky that would be like fat fascia with all the fluids running through it. Now, if you compress it, dehydrate it, now it becomes like this, a pie crust. And, 
And if it's a pie crust, there's only above and below. There's nothing in between. Now, when we do, when we hydrate the body and we twist the fascia and we move it and we breathe, then it starts to open up the layers of baklava again. So basically, we're just a big Greek pastry. I love it. I love it. And I mean, I've noticed it with just my own body. And uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm super lean overall, but just even getting more lean. I, I mean, it's just been phenomenal. Just doing the maneuvers, it's even more ripped than ever. Like it, the, it just, it's starting and I can see the areas that aren't hydrated where you, you know. It, yeah, it's, so, it's, you, they stand out, right? Yeah. It's almost like this dry band that goes through there. Yeah. Where, where do you get it most? The dehydration, I'll see it in my lower stomach. And I, I mean, if you, if I take off my shirt, I'm 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 pretty ripped. But no, the right above the pubic bone. Yeah, right in there. Oh, yeah. And so, oh, okay. Now I'm going to get into astrology because right there is where your small intestine is, and you're a Gemini, so you're a brainiac. So you use a lot here, but that's actually using your small intestine. That's the other end of the brain. Is there, so yeah, that makes sense that as a Gemini, you're going to have more adhesions there. Interesting. Yeah, but it all, yeah, goes back, it all goes back to the fundamentals. I mean, what, what I feel is, is what you're saying is so spot on. It's just we're all just chronically dehydrated. Yes. And from that, like that's where everything starts. So when we can get that going, and then now we're ringing out for lack of a better term, with these counter rotations and moving that, that this, the fascia with breath, I mean, the body starts to unwind and you can kind of wring that sponge out of all the challenges that are in there, whether it's emotionally or toxicity, just held within those areas. So, I mean, it's your system is just light years ahead of so many others that I've ever come across. So it's been amazing. So here, here, here's some things to think about. You, you, can be, you can have chronically dehydrated fascial tissue and you can be holding excess water at the same time. And this is very common. Yeah, exactly. So the exactly. first sign of dehydration is puffiness, which is fluid being held. That's the very first sign. And that's early stages, and that goes for about five to seven years. Then that fluid being held water goes away, and then it becomes really dry, and it comes there, their faces and everything, skin becomes very, you can see every rip and everything like that, which looks like a bodybuilder, by the way, or a fitness athlete. So the, furnace, and the reason why is that if I don't have the right, if I don't have enough silica in my body, and I don't have the right minerals, Think of the minerals as 102 minerals. Each mineral is a pathway that tells water to go to an organ, to a lymph node, to a nerve, to a brain tissue. Each mineral connects water to a very various, various part of the body. Water is our information. So at the very first stages is people who are chronically dehydrating their fascial and their organ tissue get hold a lot of water. And they know that because when they do a fascial maneuver the first time, like I used to, It'd be like, poof, my whole body would burst into a sweat. Like I used to, when I, if you look at the old videos of me doing fashion maneuvers, I do like, I go like four maneuvers into it and my shirt is dripping, my armpits are dripping. I'm like sweating up through here. And that's perfectly okay because I'm finally getting the body out, the water out. Yeah. When, how important, I mean, obviously, anytime there's scarring involved, you have fascial adhesions and, and you got to clear those. So, I mean, to cut out that memory system and part of the body, we're, we're obviously on the same page on, you know, those are last resorts to do. But once, it, once you've gone through that process, uh, the, the fascial maneuvers become even more important because you got to reestablish those connections through that, that fascial network.
So every cell in the body changes every seven years. Some of them days, weeks, months, whatever. So the, my question always was, how does a scar last more than seven years? It's because the new cell comes in and goes to the old cell. Hey, what are you doing? He goes, I'm just holding up here like a scar with all the other ones. And he goes, oh, okay, I'll do the same thing. So we have to, <laughs> most of my scars in my body, because I've had a few of them, are gone. Wow. They are just wow. fake. Now, we see this with C-section with women a lot. And in professional sports, we do this. We, you work with a lot of pro athletes. We remediate a scar. So if I got a scar right, right down here, and it's like pinching my shirt in that area right there. You can see my shirt changes. Well, that's what a scar does. Mm -hmm. And then that changes the range or the restriction and the range of motion of the fascia. So that changes the muscle function, the bone function, etc. So the first thing we do is tell people to remediate the scar. Twist, torque, pull. And if you're out there and you have a, like a C-section is one of the most common one. You can, and you can use that formula for everything. You can DM us. And we'll send you a C-section scar video and how to remediate it. Um, and and what you'll do is like sometimes like I have I have uh, women and we have pictures of this. They'll take their C-section scar, they'll start stretching, and all of a sudden, poof, it goes super red and painful for a minute. They have an emotional release, and it's just like it's brand new again. It was like it was like never touched before, including the release of toxins. From the from the surgery, the anesthetic, because what does the fascia do? It goes like this to it, it's protecting the body. It goes and it, it, it encapsulates stuff. So removing the scar tissue, like for someone who's had the surgeries, it'd be really powerful for them to do the fascia maneuvers, but to do partnered maneuvers. Like they're usually doing it here. That's their big one. So the belly button on torque. The, belt, the tra uh, trauma release, uh, the idiosyncal valve release, any of those, but the partner maneuver series usually will change the shape of their body visibly within one session. Yeah. I don't know if you're going to have a chance to work with them, but you should try it. Well, not only visually, but but I, I what I'm seeing is there's the connection between pain and discomfort from traumas and scars so if you have a if you had knee surgery you're going to have back you know challenges because the adhesions you know and that scarring hasn't healed all the way from the fascia and it's going to show up you know in other parts of the body absolutely yes and 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 also with that too is where is the scar because if the scar is here it's about grief if it's, if it's here it's about my heart if the scar was here, it's about my desire, or through here, through here. If it's here, it's about worry. So you can look at at what meridian lines, a simple way to do this, because fascia and meridians are closely related, fascial or uh, meridian lines, and traditional tr meridian lines are very closely related. They're not exact. And we haven't put out the map on purpose, by the way. Um, I'll tell you why in a second. But you can look at where a scar is, and then you can look at that as a component of the emotions. Like if it's, uh, if it's all down here, it's gallbladder, and it's resentment. And that's also the same thing we look at with tattoos, because what is tattoos? It's a scar with color. Yeah, it's so cool. cool. And everyone listening, there's so many facets to healing. I mean, you have essential oils, like the frequency, the healing pulses, of the earth you know for one of our oldest most primal nerves our olfactory nerve and then giving that that nutrients and frequency and and oil to our body to help fuel it to you know just uh, just the breath work of fascial stuff i mean there and then the light stuff and then obviously the emf stuff it's like there's there's like it's i mean i've been in the space for decades but but it's just, it's for people that are coming on. What we're doing is we're putting all these components together so you could start to, you know, have and understand them in layman's terms. And hey, how does fat interplay with our body and our fascia? And then how does a scar interplay with pain? And then, you know, how can you clear with fascia stuff? And how do we use these amazing essential oils to help facilitate healing? I mean, it's just, and then the conversation you had with Bra about, abundance and 
bringing that in. It's just, oh, there's so much here. It's, uh, I love it. It's so fun. We're moving to a new area and, you know, and, and there are, there are definitely patterns because I can tell you the difference between a Wi-Fi signal and how it interacts on this side of my body and a Bluetooth signal that goes down the back of this side, Wi-Fi on the front of this side. I can feel it, which causes the body, if it tightens up in those areas, guess what it causes? Torquing. And, and that, that specifically affects organs. Certain frequencies affect different organs, which affect behavior in the body. Part of the reason why your EMF rocks work so well is that, is that as soon as you put it on it, those torque patterns aren't so bad. Yeah. So people can move it. And, and, and the other part, I mean, I think there's, a, there's the combination between the barium the chemtrails dehydrating us and our fascia and wanting to get diatomaceous earth, get your diatomaceous earth and silica back in your system to rehydrate it. And then like the founder of biogeometry, Ibrahim Karim will say, hey, our entire planet's being dehydrated from the rollout of radiation. We've never rolled out Wi-Fi at that level because the 2.45 gigahertz or 2.45 billion waves per second of a one directional waveform is the lowest level of a, of a wireless signal that will destructure water. So we're being dehydrated in so many different ways. Yeah, you know, it's, and we're going to get into this when you come down here because we're going to do some real live examples. We're going to show the effects of uh, EMF and frequency on the body. We're going to show the effects of it on walking and gateway like putting a phone on one side of the body and walking and then taking it off and then watching gate patterns. We're gonna do some of this stuff when you're here. We're gonna play around. It's super important that, that and especially with the conversation back to fat, is that people realize this, is that if we give the body the basic tools, and this is why your EMF rocks are, are, are wet silica rocks that absorb frequency. Well, our body is wet silica. And if the, your rocks dehydrate, they lose their effectiveness. If we dehydrate, we lose our effectiveness. So it, at the end of it, it's about having the, having the base elements and the minerals in balance, keeping the body hydrated and moving it. Um, if there's scars, to remove them or remediate them. And everything starts to work. We don't have to, we don't have to like, We've made healing so complex when it really is move the, get it hydrated, let the, move the body and let it heal. Yeah. And what, what I'm curious about is, is your movement. Like, so I'm, I'm big into sports and, and getting out and doing stuff. And so that's huge movement that I'll do, you know, throughout the day where, you know, someone say, oh, I went to the gym for an hour or two or whatever. You're saying that just doing the fascia maneuvers alone will help with yeah, that I mean, crazy amount of movement. Dude, I, I, I don't work out at all. <laughs> I do and so, so, zero, so, zero workout. So would it be beneficial and even more optimal to combine that with a workout yeah because i yeah. mean i yeah. so i was proving one one side of it i am okay. yes like when i go back to lion's bay and i'm climbing boulders every day i get real it, it shows really fast so my next step is i'm not in the environment here because i just got flatland and beach i don't have it but for me i love to climb i don't i don't i know i spent my life working out i no longer want to be on a flat surface workout I want to move through nature. I want to climb through stuff. I want to jump in trees. I want to climb rocks. That's what I want to do. And, and so I'm about to do that in this journey that we're going on here because I'm, I'm, our next place that we're going to be going to is going to have more of this in there. But yes, the answer is, but it's movement. It's natural range of movement because here, here's an example. So if you take your hand like this and then and just check your range of motion, get the far end of the range of motion. Okay, now squeeze it really tight. Do it again. You lose the range of motion. Yep. So that means if I grab a bar and I lift it, it don't matter what direction, it doesn't matter dumbbell or not, I'm restricting, building restrictions into my range of motion, which eventually 
restrict my body's ability to move, which causes me to be dysfunctional. And, and, but if I grab a big sack of potatoes and move it around, and this is why all these natural movements, these best athletes now are lifting tires and moving sacks of potatoes and stuff like that. So coming from a gym, being a, a, a bodybuilder, nationally ranked bodybuilder, I was going pro, who spent my life in the gym, I'm now here saying, after the 35 years or 40 years of doing that to my body, I'm here to say I was wrong. We are meant to be in nature. We're meant to move in nature. If you watch, uh, I'll, I'll think I'll post it up if I can find it. I posted a, there's Kennedy when he did the whole Get Fit program. They show all the young boys in the high schools. Every one of them was lean and ripped and moving, and all they were doing was natural movement. And, and we've gone from that in the 60s and 70s all the way to, you know, big guys moving around, big girls, but dysfunctional, sick as a society. Yeah, I agree. And it's when you have the fascia connected and you're going to have the strength, the stability, and the endurance, like more than ever. So, for example, for me, I've seen it, and I've shared this with you before, is I saw it in the water swimming and racing a few guys that used to be able to beat me, and now I'm blowing them out of the water. I have literally more strength, and I feel it in the tone of my voice. So, and then I can see it aesthetically. It's like each tier, when you keep doing these fashion maneuvers, everyone, please do them every day as much as you can. You're going to start to see these step ups in your health. And, and you know, for the most part, you know, I'm a healthy guy, you're a healthy guy, but there's so many other layers and levels that, that we could get to. And yeah. I hadn't been able to get there doing everything else. And not until I started doing the fashion maneuvers consistently did I start to see, see that step up. I, I can't wait to uh, spend the time with you uh, in March. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Yeah, and so, uh, we'll talk be we'll we'll talk again online about EMFs again. I have some other questions because uh, there's an EMF conference I talked about. I'm going to go speak at, and um, and I, I'm I'm going to stick to what I know, which is how how it affects the body or how to prepare ourselves instead of what the damage is. What can I do about it? But I want to get some specific advice from you too. Yeah, I look forward to it. But, but yeah, we're going to have fun. Thanks so much. Hey, buddy. Take care. Take care. Okay. All right.